Okay, I'm just going to take you through a quick breakdown of the internals of the SFS. So from the outside, it looks the same as basically a regular strife, save for the grommet with power lead. And of course, the select fire switch. Okay, to open up the blaster. Basically, it doesn't fully come apart anymore because of this. But, we start from the back. Move to the front. Just pull it up there. Swing it round. And it's open up that way. So I'm just going to go through it piece by piece and show you what was done. In the flywheel cage, we're running worker flywheels here. This brass piece here is made from 5 8 inch tubing, and this is basically the dark guide. I'm not going to go too much into that in this video because that's basically a separate modification. We're more interested in the fire control group here. So I'll just take out the trigger spring here. This spring, I don't remember where it came from. You'll just need to find an appropriate spring to fit into this section. Okay, we'll start with and this trigger here. Let's bring that out. Okay, as you can see, first thing that jumps out at you is this micro switch. This is actually one of the Strife stock micro switches. It's been shaved down slightly, just along this section here. And then it's been glued onto the trigger and it acts as a spring-loaded catch. That interacts with the actuator arm in order to disconnect the trigger after a single trigger pull. And the white piece of plastic you can see along here that's a stopping block that interacts with the firing sear and that's part of the select the fire select system the actuator arm is next the actuator arm has just had a simple little cut made along here so this part's been shaved down in order to interact with the catch now the darker part here is just a piece of soft plastic glued on and then shave down increment by increment until it was just within tolerances. Tolerances are very important on this blaster. The pusher arm. Um, the most obvious thing that will jump out at you in this one is the rack that's been glued on. This rack was taken out of a Vulcan, in fact. Same as the pinion. Both of these pieces were just kind of hacked out of the gearbox. There's also a section of plastic ball that's been shaved out in order to accommodate the pinion. And then one of the things I'm most proud of in this blaster for some reason is this angled plate at the front here. This plate was actually taken off the dart checker lock that normally goes in here. So that lock piece just cut down for this nice little angled plate and then the angled plate was glued on here. Now the reason this plate's on here is because we actually lose quite a bit of the pusher stroke because of the disconnecting catch mechanism here. So it wasn't pushing the darts into the flywheels so we needed to make up a little bit of extra space. Now a straight pusher extension would obviously block would block the darts as they come up but this angled plate brings the darts up and forward also giving us the extra length we need now down the bottom here you can see a micro switch so basically the stock mechanism has been left intact but the switch the micro switch has been replaced with this upgraded switch there you go that's a better view of it Yes, well, the springs are still in there, so forget that. Okay, if we come around to the display side of the blaster, we can see here the stock battery case. Bit of strength. There we go. That's because of the blue tag. Here is the motor and gearbox setup. So, this is the gearbox here. This runs the pinion you saw earlier. This is actually 3D printed. 15 millimeter worm drive gearbox. It, I bought it off Shapeways. The motor is an MTB Rhino running on a 3S. All the motors in this blaster are Rhinos running off a 3S, of course. 
this coupler piece also ripped out of a Vulcan. And uh, you might see here, this material holding the motor in is actually just blue tack. Um, the coupler here wasn't perfect, so there's more vibration than I'd like happening during the spin. So to make up for that, I tried making more conventional brackets to hold the motor in, didn't work. So this blue tack wadding soaks up the vibration and the pressure from the lid holds the whole thing in place. This basically is the bracket now. If I make a second one, I'd like to get a cleaner connection on the coupling here. Okay, this view here will just give you a view of the micro switches and the wiring. These uh, three micro switches purchased from Dean at Blaster Tech, thanks to him. One of the big challenges in this blaster is fitting a lot of function into quite a small space. So in order to get the wiring to fit, the only way to do that was to make holes through basically any piece of plastic that got in the way. And then just poke the wires through the holes, do the soldering inside the shell. This uses a pusher check switch system similar to a rapid strike. It means the pusher arm always returns to the home position after the trigger is released. If the pusher arm happens to be out here, the mechanism will continue to cycle until it returns to the home position. It does this with the little micro switch in here. That little green piece there is actually a little tooth glued onto the collar of the pinion. So as the pinion spins round for every cycle, when it reaches this top position here, the little tooth will be, will be pushing in the micro switch. Okay, now for my favorite part, the select fire. So this is the switch here. You can hear that nice sound. It came off a proton. Uh, I feel a little bad sacrificing both a proton and a Vulcan to this build, but then, then I fire it and I'm not so sorry. All right, here is the inside view of the selector fire switch. So as you can see, there's another stock micro switch also ripped out of the wiring system in there. That's what gives it the lovely clicking sound. So I'll just pull the sear out. Okay, this is a slightly closer view. You might be able to see the little, little notches I cut in there for the selector switch to work. So this piece here comes out of a proton. Just glued a bunch of junk to it carved a couple of notches in for the micro switch and that's the fire control sear. So the way it works is if I pull the trigger, pull, 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 catch. The pusher extended once, disconnected. The trigger is still in the pull position but the pusher has been reset. Now, in full auto mode, the trigger would carry all the way to the back to this micro switch here and you heard that it's clicking the micro switch so as long as my finger is held down on the trigger the micro switch has been pressed that activates the pinion and that works the pusher back and forth i'll demonstrate this in a second so for fully automatic mode the sear sits in this position here free of the travel of this stopping block here. But in semi-auto mode, the CS sits roughly in this position. And I might be able to demonstrate here. The trigger comes forward, comes back, comes back, comes back, hits the sear just before it comes back. So by stopping here mimics how a stock strife pusher mechanism works. It's far more convenient than having it disconnect and having to reset on every shot. Okay, this is just a firing demonstration video to show you how fully automatic works. This is running off three AA's for a combined total of 4.5 volts. In the field, it'll be running off a 3S LiPo with about 11 to 12 volts, depending on the charge. So the rate of fire on a 3S will be much, much higher.
that should sum it up pretty nicely.